Hi everybody, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about tabs, and I'm going to show you a lot of the advanced features of how you can customize the tabs. You'll notice my tabs at the top of the screen. I can click on the different tabs and it'll take me to different content. You can customize that content. This could be a weekly agenda, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It can be an overview. You can have readings and assignments and you can have rubrics. There are a lot of things that you can do with tabs, but what I want to show you is for one, how to create this tabbed interaction and then what can you customize? So we're gonna look at customizing the colors of the tabs. We're gonna look at changing the font color, the size, getting rid of that yellow underline that you see on hyperlinked text, giving this a good look and feel. I'll show you where you can find different color schemes if you want ideas for colors for tabs, as well as what fonts are available if you want to change the font, including the font size and the color. So we're going to get to this point, but first I'm going to show you the basic components of what a tabbed interaction is. It does require a little bit of coding, but it's actually a lot of fun. Here's a tab in the simplest form. I have three tabs up here, and you notice that the content changes when I click from one tab to another tab. Now there are some things that I want to change. I don't like the blue font, and I don't like the underline because it looks like a hyperlink, which it is, and we'll talk about that. So I want to change those, and of course you'll put your own content into your tabs once you have them created. So let's talk about what we're seeing here. First we have a div. The div has two classes. One is enhanceable underscore content, the other is tabs. So you don't need to know what that means. You just copy and paste that into your page. Everything in between those two divs is going to be your tabbed interaction. Now part of it is going to be the tabs themselves and part of it will be the content that's on each tab. So if we look up top, we have an unordered list, which is just a bullet point list. And we have three list items here. We have a first tab, a second tab, a third tab. And you notice that it's hyperlinked. This a href equals, that's normally a hyperlink. If you wanna take them to YouTube or to Google or to your website or blog, then you would put the address in there. But for me, you notice that I href the first tab to something called hashtag tab-1. And down below, I can see a div with the ID tab-1. And so it's saying, essentially, when you click on first tab, it's going to take you to this content. Likewise, the second bullet point goes to tab 2, and you can see tab 2 at the bottom. So down at the bottom, where you see this paragraph, tab one content, you'll want to replace that with all of the content for that tab. And a good practice is to actually create your page and another page in Canvas, put the text, put the imagery, put all of the elements that you want on there. When it's done, then you'll go into the HTML editor, you'll copy all of the code from that page and just put it right inside this div for tab one. You'll do the same for tab two and tab three. It's going to be hard to work on this page to build the content. So if you can build the content on a different page and just bring it over, it's going to make it a lot easier. And I'll mention as a side note before we move on that you can name the hrefs and the IDs whatever you want. I chose tab-1, tab-2, tab-3. You could do hashtag first-tab. I could name it after myself, Sean1, Sean2, Sean3, whatever you want. But the thing to remember is that Whatever appears after the hashtag in between the quotation marks has to be exactly what you have in the ID. You can't get a single character or dash wrong. All right, so let's pull back the curtain on this page and take a look at what we have. So first and foremost, I see this bulleted list and these are all hyperlinked. And on the edit page, it doesn't really do much. I can see the link options and I can see where that hyperlink goes. I can see that this is hyperlinked to tab-1 and you can't see the divs down in the bottom here in the contents, but they're there. So we're gonna go into the HTML editor and take a look at that. You can see my div right here, and you can see all of the content in between the divs. Here's my bulleted list, and so those are my tabs. And the first time, thing I want to do as I start customizing these is I wanna take out that underline, because these are technically hyperlinks, but I don't like that it's blue text with an underline because it just looks like a hyperlink. So I'm gonna go into the style right here, and I'm gonna put text decoration none. Before we move on, let's save this and take a look at what that did. All right, now you can see that this first tab doesn't have the underline. Tabs two and tabs three still have the underline because it's a hyperlink. And so I don't want it to look like a hyperlink, I want it to look more professional. And so I'm gonna put that text decoration none for the other two tabs as well. Let's hop in, all I'm gonna do here is copy this and then I'll go ahead and paste it. All right, so now we've gotten rid of that underline, but I wanna change the color. Now, one of the tools that I really like to come up with color schemes is a website called coolers.co. 
This will help you generate awesome color schemes. So I'm going to click over here on generate. And then what's cool is if you want to just randomly generate color schemes, you press the space bar. So as I press the space bar, I'm going to look for colors that I like. I'm going to go and look for some earthy tones. So as soon as I see an earthy tone, here's a blue that I kind of like. And so I'm going to go ahead and lock this. And I actually like this one as well. So I'm going to lock both of those. I'll hit spacebar again and see what colors can complement these two colors here. Maybe I'll go with this one. Also notice that I can view different shades of this. So if I like this, but maybe I want it to be a shade darker, then I can choose that. I can drag and drop as well. And so since I have three tabs, let's stick with these three colors right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for the first tab, I'll have this Yale blue color. And I'm going to go ahead and copy the hex code. And again, if I wanted a different shade of this, then I could choose that. But I'll just stick with this one for now. And so I have the first tab, I'm styling it right now. And what I'm going to do is determine a background color. And there I put in my code. Let's grab the other codes for the other two. All right, let's save that real fast and just see what we have so far. All right, I have the colors. I'm going to have to change those fonts, though. You'll notice I can't have that light blue, and even the black doesn't look great. So I'm going to change this first tab to white, and probably the second tab to white. And you want to be mindful of accessibility, so you want a good contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and edit, hop into that HTML editor again. And so I have the background color. Now I want to determine the actual color. And for this one, I'm just going to put white. For this next one, I'll put white as well. Now for the third one, I'm going to hop back over here and I want to get a shade of this. I want to get a, a really dark shade. I don't want it to be white. I don't want it to be black though either. So let me get this color right here. Oh, that's maybe a little bit dark. Let's see what this one does. I'll copy that hex code. All right, let's see what we have. Let's just increase the font of those tabs because this is a small, so this looks like 12 point font and let's bump that up to at least 18. And this is something that you can do right in the rich text editor. So I'm going to highlight the text on the first one. I want to increase this to maybe 18. And I can do that to the other ones. So let's go ahead and highlight this. 18 font and 18 font. Now let's change the font itself. So right now it's the default font. I'm going to go to format and we're going to look at the different fonts that we have available. So most of these are sans serif fonts, which is actually very good for Canvas that they did that because sans serif fonts are easier to read, meaning that students are going to read more of it if it's easier to read. So you have various options. It's obviously not a very comprehensive repository of fonts, but it's pretty good. For a sample page, I use this architect's daughter and I'm just going to do that again. So I'll go ahead and change each of these to architect's daughter. And I personally like to highlight each one and change each one individually as opposed to highlighting all of them at once, just because it helps to make the code a little bit cleaner. In fact, I'm seeing even as I did that, it created two different spans. So one has a style with all of this font family. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and delete this span. I just, it's just me. I want my code to be pretty clean. And so I'm going to put that right here. And since they're all the same, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning. Okay, let's save that and see what that looks like. All right, so let's review what we've done. We obviously put some colors on the tabs themselves. We changed the font size from 12 point to 18 point. We changed the font itself from default to something a little more decorative. We changed the colors of the font themselves and got rid of the decorative underline because technically these are hyperlinks. You can see even my mouse as it hovers over, it recognizes that I'm clicking on hyperlinks, but I don't want it to look like hyperlinks. I want it to look like a clean tab. Now you want to see something fun. Right now when we click on the tabs, then the tabs are colored, but all of the content is just plain white. It, this is all just default. So what if we were to change the content of the tab so that it looked like the tab colors itself? Let's see what that would look like. I'm going to head back to the edit menu. Let's get that HTML editor out. And now you can see the styling that we have up here for each of the tabs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that. Now this is for tab one. So I'm going to hop down here to tab two and right in the div, I'm going to just paste the styling. So we don't really need text decoration done because if you happen to have a hyperlink in that tab, 
you probably actually want it to look like a hyperlink. That would probably be important, but we're going to copy the background color and I'm going to make the font the same color as the tab. So let's look for tab two. Here's the styling. So I'm going to copy this style and same thing. I'll just get rid of the text decoration. None keep the other elements and only for continuity. This is bothering me a little bit. I'm just going to copy this and place it right here. Now, once I save the page and come back to it, it's going to clean up right now. This doesn't look the same. It'll make it look like these other bullet points. That's just me being a little bit weird. So here's the hyperlink. I'm going to grab this style now. So I have the colors and I'll copy that. I'll put it into div three. And once again, take out the text decoration because we don't need that. So now when we save, ideally, each of these content divs are going to have the same properties as their tabs. So let's go ahead and save that and navigate around. So here's that first tab, here's the second tab, and here's the third tab. Now I want to reiterate a point that I made earlier. If I hop back over to the edit, editing the tabs from the rich content editor is actually really hard. This would be the rich content editor and you can see all of the components here and I can go ahead and add some stuff. Let's go ahead and maybe uh, use some coarse images. Here's the panda that I like to use. Even if I make this full screen, it's just really hard to organize this content. So my suggestions are either use the HTML editor, which can be overwhelming if you're new, but the more you look at this, the more it makes sense. And so I typically just create my content here in the HTML editor, but probably a better approach if you're not comfortable with HTML is get the page, get all the content the way that you want it, go into the HTML editor of that page and just copy everything, copy the entire page. And then you would paste it into your tab. So for example, here is tab two. I would go ahead and delete the boilerplate that says tab two content. You can put in a few spaces and then paste the content anywhere between this div and that div, and then it'll all land on tab two. And if you need to make a change, maybe make the change on the other page in canvas come over here and delete everything on tab two and just paste all of it over all at once. That's probably the easiest way to work with tabs. So here you can see the panda that I added and it looks like I actually deleted that paragraph. I didn't, I didn't mean to actually delete it, but we can go in and add stuff. So we started out on this page and what we explored is how to create the tabbed interactions, how to take off that hyperlink underline, change the font color, increase the font size, change the actual font itself, and then how to explore different color schemes and incorporate those into your tabs. And the result is a nice looking interaction that's easy for students to navigate. And if you're curious what's on this fifth tab and you think that I'm not gonna Rickroll you, then you are mistaken. Now, if you happen to like the layout and content of the tabs themselves, how I arrange the imagery and how I set up that content, then leave a comment below and tell me which one you like the best. And maybe I'll make a tutorial in the future about how to customize the layouts of your canvas pages and organize the content. I'm also going to leave the basic HTML code for the tabbed interaction in the comment section of YouTube here, as well as on our website, howtocanvas.com. So look for the tabbed interaction blog post on that website visit us on social media. And as always, I appreciate all of my subscribers. So click that subscribe button, sign up to receive notifications, and I will see you in our next video. Everyone, happy teaching and learning.